Hello boys and girls, it's Mr. Brewer and uh, we're going to talk about a little bit of volume today in fifth grade. Um, we're going to talk about correctly calculating the volume of a three-dimensional figure. Now uh, a couple weeks ago, in fact last week, you had the opportunity to draw some figures that were three-dimensional. Remember you started with a little box and then you took that box and turned it into a cube and then you extended that cube out in a multiple of different directions. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about here, but we're going to correctly calculate uh, the volume of a three-dimensional uh, figure. Um, we've looked at one-dimensional figures. Here we have a square, we have a, a triangle, and a rectangle. Um, those are very flat figures. In other words, there is no depth to them. In fact, if you were looking at this board, looking at this board, it looks very flat. But if you come and look at the board from the side over here, you'll notice that it has depth and it also has height, whereas a flat one-dimensional object like this doesn't. It doesn't have any depth to it. It doesn't have any height to it. Not that we can see anyways, at least only on one side. So we're going to look at looking at three-dimensional objects. Now here's just a, I just quickly drew this. Um, I know it looks very crazy, but the only reason that I did it was to give you an idea. This is that rectangle, but now it's got depth to it. You can actually see the lines going back it makes it look three-dimensional. You can see the little individual cubes. One that's much better would be this one. You can see on this that it has one, two, three, four, five. We've got five, um, we have uh, five boxes or five cubes going this way. And we've got one, two, three, four, five going this way. Okay, if we count up, we've got one, two, three, four, five, five cubes going this way. Okay, so basically, remember, we took the idea of looking at those, those three-dimensional shapes. They had to look at a box, and then they wanted you to do a side view, a front view, and a top view. Do you remember that? And this is to give you an idea of that depth and how many cubes or how many little boxes there are. If there are five cubes going this way and five cubes going that way, this whole, this whole surface, this one level right here, has how many cubes? You remember how you did that? Right, you multiplied 5 times 5, and you got a total of 25 cubes for this one section. So this one section right here had 25 cubes. But there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 levels of it, right? So in order to figure that out, this is where we're going to come into... Volume is equal to length times width times height. And we're going to talk about that looking at this. So three-dimensional figures have a length, they have a width, and they have a height. As you can see here, this box has a length, it has a width, and it has a height. Just as you saw in this box, it has a length, if you will, here, it has a width here, and it has a height there. Okay? So three-dimensional objects have a length, a width, and a height. To figure out the volume of a particular object or a three-dimensional figure, you're going to multiply the length times the width times the height to get the volume of this particular shape. Now, it doesn't matter in which order you multiply them. It doesn't matter. I can multiply height times length and then width. I could multiply width times length times height. I can multiply length times width times height. It doesn't matter. In the, doesn't matter the order in which you multiply them, you're still going to come out with the same answer. But volume is the amount of space inside that three-dimensional cube. So looking back at this one, it's what's inside this. Remember, we're not just looking at a flat, one-dimensional shape. We're not just looking at this shape. We're looking at the shape as it extends out, okay, and gives us that three-dimensional look. So we're not just looking at this. We're looking at this. We're looking at all of the pieces, kind of putting it together, what's inside that particular shape. And I guess the best way to think about this, this kind of looks like a fish tank, doesn't it? To figure out the volume of a fish tank, in other words, how much water is going to go inside this tank, how much can it hold, that's the volume. What can fit inside that space is the volume of the shape. So if we go to this one and I say, all right, this particular shape has a length of 10 centimeters. It has a width of 4 centimeters and a height of 8 centimeters. Now, if you remember, the equation was, in order to figure out volume, it's equal to length times width 
times height. Okay? And if that's the case, I can multiply the length is equal to 10 centimeters, the width is equal to 4 centimeters. Let's put the centimeters there, don't forget that. Centimeters, and the height is equal to 8 centimeters. Now remember what I said, it doesn't matter which order you multiply them, but let's just do it this way. 10 times 4 gives us 40 times 8. 4 times 8 is 32. Add the 0 and we get centimeters. Now, because we're working with 1, 2, 3 sides, we're going to cube it. So it's 320 centimeters cubed. So the volume of this box is equal to 320 centimeters cubed. Oops, that's not a very good 3. Okay, cubed. Okay, so the volume is equal to 320 centimeters cubed. So let's look at this one. Here's another one. This one has a length of 4, a width of 2 and a half, and a height of 3. Now, don't be afraid by looking at the decimals. It's going to be the same thing. If I take, uh, take 2.5 and multiply it times 4, I get 20. Carry the 2. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 2 is 10. Move the decimal place over 1. So 4 centimeters times 2.5 centimeters gives me 10 centimeters times 3 will give me 30 centimeters. So the volume of this shape, remember volume is equal to length times width times height. So the volume of this shape, oops, the volume of this shape, let's go to a different color here. Um, volume is equal to 30 centimeters cubed. Okay? So that's the volume of this sheep, of this sheep. Sheep, shape it is. Uh, so remember, it's length times width times height. Don't let the decimals fool you. Don't let the fractions fool you. If you have a fractional shape, which we'll talk about uh, tomorrow during class, if you're dealing with fractions, it's the same thing. We're just multiplying fractions. So let's look at one more here. Now, look at this one. This one's a little bit different. Now, remember, volume is equal to what? Volume is equal to its length times its width times its height. Okay? So this to me looks like its width, this is its um, length, and this is its height. And it really doesn't matter. You're still going to multiply this times this times this. Okay? So if we have 4.5, we're going to take 15 and multiply it by 4 times 4.5. 25, carry the 2, 5 times 1, 5, uh, that's 7. 4 times 2 is 20, carry the 2, cross out that one, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 6, that gives us 6, 7, 5, so it's giving us a little bit of a decimal there, 67.5, because remember we've got to move the decimal over 1, so we move it over 1, and then we're going to multiply this times 3, which 3 times 5 is 15, carry the 1, 3 times 7 is 21, plus 1 is 22, carry the 2, 3 times 6 is 18, plus 2, is 20, that gives us a volume, a volume equal to 202.5 inches cubed. Okay, so 202.5 inches cubed. Okay, so this is pretty much how you will figure out your uh, length, width, and uh, or figure out the volume of a particular shape. Um, in, in this case, a three-dimensional shape. But all you really have to remember is that volume is equal to the length times the width times the height. And that'll do it on this experience with volume. Tonight, boys and girls, you have no practice problems to do. Um, just go ahead and review the video a little bit. Think about it. And uh, tomorrow morning, we'll get into it. We're actually going to do a little work in our notebooks. And uh, then we're going to do some problems in class. So this is Mr. Brewer, and I'm glad to be back. And you have been flipped.